Imagine if you were reborn in a world ruled by women. Whether that's a good thing or not is up to you to decide, but that is going to be the reality of a character called Leon. At the start of the story, we see someone who appears to be an average shut in who probably doesn't have a lot of friends or life outside his room. Ooh, self burn! Those are rare. Playing an autumn game, which is like a dating sim game. It's obvious that he doesn't like anything about playing it, but it seems like his sister blackmailed him into it. She probably has some dirt on him. For context, the plot of the game takes place in a matriarch, which is more like a world ruled by women. Even though it's supposed to be an autumn game, it has robot mecha and flying vehicles, and it's more violent than what you see in your typical autumn game. And despite the fact here all the major players in the plot of the autumn game would appear making the peaceful life he dreams of to be that much more difficult. Our boy Leon seems satisfied after amassing all that money and seeing the look of dissatisfaction on the stepmother's face. And since he's now a baronet, he's now enjoying his peaceful life on the uninhabited island he found on his way. He and his robot companion Luxion now discuss how and what they're going to do to develop the floating island. Unknowing to him, he wasn't actually a baronet but was given the rank of a baron probably because he cleared a dungeon by himself and found an uninhabited island. So now he has to marriage of noobs acting all high and mighty. The prince even gets a scratch but Marie is shown healing him with magic and asked the most is the character Marie, who seems to be messing with the entire storyline, clinging to the prince instead of Olivia, and Olivia is stuck with him as a background character. Marie's things were burnt by some group of girls, but Angelica was accused of ordering them. And the jerk pretty prince didn't even bother to listen to Angelica's side before telling her to stay away from him and his company. I find the prince to be more annoying than even the Marie character. Meanwhile, Leon and his bros were discussing how none of them are ever gonna get laid. I mean get a girl to marry them. They end up with a discussion about the current situation between the prince and Angelica which Leon notes that the event is not supposed to happen this quickly. He tries to find out more about Marie from Olivia, but then she suspects that maybe Leon likes her like the other guys. And of course, there is no way our Chad main character is like the other guys and falls for Marie. Olivia and Leon hear a sound coming from the other side of the room and of course, the no good Marie is not just busy with the prince but even Brad, one of the prince's companion. It has become clear that she knows exactly what she's doing and seems to be setting things up and controlling the brainless pretty prince and his companions at the palm of her hand. Even mentioning the fact that it's an autumn game, which could mean she's also a reincarnate like Leon. I just feel bad for Angelica because the brainless prince who is easily manipulated doesn't deserve her. Leon's sister barges into his room to find out if he knows about Marie, Angelica, and the not-so-smart prince. Leon tells her about the bullying and the incidents surrounding the prince and Angelica. His sister mentions that Angelica's followers most likely act alone, and she also warns him to stay away from Angelica who seems to be on a ticking time bomb and he should just be on good terms with the easily manipulated prince if he wants to have a smooth life. While complaining about his school life and lack of a wife, he bickers a bit with his sooner robot Luxion before asking him to investigate both Marie and Angelica. At the party, Marie acts all innocent to the dumb prince as usual, and Angelica just stares at a girl flirting with her fiancé. Meanwhile, Leon and his boys make a pact to finally find a good girl that they can marry, but just like me, they get no bitches. How dare you! You're so shallow I can't even look at you! You've clearly never even seen yourself in a mirror! <laughs> What a joke! Come see us when you've been reincarnated as different men. The worst she can say is no right. While still lying in their disappointment, Olivia rushes over to let Leon know that something is going on. Angelica tells the not-so-bright prince that Marie has been getting it with the other guy, and she's not as innocent as he thinks. But as expected from someone who just has a pretty face, he and his company don't see any problem with this, and they all confess that they've all fallen for her with the prince claiming he has fallen the hardest for her. He also publicly calls off his engagement with Angelica leaving the crowd to gossip and make fun of her. Angelica deserves better. This enraged Angelica, and she throws her gloves to Marie to challenge her to a duel. Maybe we'll get to see some face slapping and hair pulling. But of course, they were talking about Mecca's battle. The prince with questionable IQ and his colleague all decide to volunteer to battle in her place instead. I think I finally understand how girls feel when they see a harem show. Because the opponent would be the prince, nobody would normally choose to go against him, which left poor Angelica all alone. Leon mentions that Angelica is in the worst type of situation because even if she finds someone and they lose the duel, which would most likely happen since the opponent is the dumb prince, then all that's left for her is a life of misery. Although she's supposed to be the antagonist, she hasn't done anything to warrant that type of treatment. I actually hope someone would punch this so-called prince in the face. Even our Chad Leon agrees. Leon, contrary to what he's been saying about not wanting to stick out, 
decides to help her out and take on the dumb prince and his friends 5v1. He also decides to act because thanks to Luxian, he realizes that Marie is just like him, a character not originally from the world i.e. she was also reincarnated. The conditions that Marie set for the duel were that Angelica should stop preventing her from getting it with the prince, which Leon expected since she just repeated the same line from the game. And Angelica's condition was for Marie to leave the prince if she wins, and the battle would take place in an arena. They first talk bad about Leon, but our Chad main character knows how to handle a verbal battle as well, and puts all of them in their place. He would fight all five of them in a 1v1 which is five rounds. This whole thing obviously isn't part of the storyline that Marie probably knew about from the game and it upsets her a bit but she's still convinced the prince and the others would win. And like the classic school trope, our Chad Leon is bullied for going against the most popular person which is the dumb pretty face prince. What's surprising is the fact that his friends are even part of the bully. But instead of Leon being angry with his so-called friends, he understands that they are just trying to climb the social ladder and he has no hard feelings. The students even place bets on who they think would win but of course, our main character Leon is the underdog and almost no one is betting he would win so he makes the conscious decision to bet a part of his fortune on himself. Angelica comes to advise Leon that it might be smarter for him to forfeit the duel since she has nothing she can offer him in return because her family has reprimanded her and she'll most likely be placed on house arrest. But Chad Leon rejects this saying that he didn't just do it for her, but because he wanted to punch those good-for-nothing pretty faces after his bad luck streak with the ladies. And he's 100% certain that he'll win regardless. The fact that Angelica even came to Leon to advise him not to die for her sake makes her one of the most decent characters in the show regardless of whether the game painted her as the antagonist. Luxian makes a cool suit for Leon which he disapproved of, and Olivia came to cheer him on in hopes he wins. At the arena, all the cheers were going to the prince and company and all the boo were going to Leon. At first, Angelica is worried that he doesn't have any suit of armor, but Leon tells her not to worry, and Luxian delivers his armor in style. The other students make fun of him for having a quote-unquote outdated mecha, but they have no clue that in this story, Leon is the main character, not the dumb prince. Even Angelica is concerned about whether Leon would be able to put up a fight against them with a lost item. It is said that lost items were made by the old civilization and can't really be replicated by modern-day technology. But it doesn't usually mean that it's better. But Olivia still cheers for him. The prince's friend Brad, yeah, the same Brad that was having a good time with Marie in the library, is Leon's first opponent. And like what you'd expect from someone who always hangs around the prince, loves to talk and brag about his strength, which Leon makes fun of saying he's just revealing all his secrets. As Leon is about to engage, you'd think that Leon would equip a sword or a gun or something. But no, bro he brought a shovel. Reminds me of a certain character. The fight, if we can even call it that, didn't even last 5 seconds before he was down. Our Chad Leon doesn't just talk the talk but he can also back it up it seems. This shocks everyone completely speechless, and the only one who applauds is his master. Yes, the tea master. His next opponent is Greg, another one of the dumb prince's colleagues. And although this fight doesn't end as quickly as Brad's, it was still completely one-sided. Our Chad didn't just give him a one-sided beating. He even lectures Greg about everything he's doing wrong as double standards. Greg goes off to show the most humiliating display while still saying the only reason Leon won was because of his armor. But this is the same guy that agreed to fight five versus one after they bullied Angelica. Chris the next opponent, like the others before him. Talks big but has nothing to show for it as it's not even a warm-up for Leon. Even Lockshans feels bad for Chris after that. Jilk, the last remaining of the prince's colleagues who hasn't gotten whooped, is concerned about the prince's reputation if this goes on so he decides to plot something. Leon's sister, Jenna, was not happy about Leon damaging the family name by messing with the prince and his colleagues so she was easily coerced by Jilk to do something to Leon's armor. So she lies to Angelica and Olivia who were guarding it that Leon was in trouble and needed their help. Luxions tells Leon about the sister planting explosives on the armor, but this doesn't even come as a shock to Leon, knowing the kind of person his sister was. Honestly, the sister is probably even worse than Marie for knowingly keeping her family in life-threatening danger just to be on the prince's good side. The match starts and like the others, Jilk starts off with an arrogant attitude but then shows a pathetic display for someone with all that talk. When he realizes that his weapons aren't doing anything, he decides to detonate the bomb to kill Leon. But of course, the bomb does nothing to the armor. When Jilk saw that none of his plans are working, he decides to threaten Leon and his entire family. Leon tells him that he wonders how the public would feel about the threat but Jilk tries to deny it 
not knowing that Luxian can record audio, and Leon plays it back to him. He then calls Leon's action cowardly, which is rich coming from someone who just threatened another person's family, and even tried to rig his armor with explosives to kill him. Leon then delivers the finishing blow and ends the match. See, instead of the sister being happy that the plan she was coerced to fails, she is instead angry which makes her more annoying to me than Marie. Marie herself is shocked that the other characters are weak, and she has no idea where this new character who's stronger than them came from. The dumb prince tries to reassure her that he's going to win since he has the best, state-of-the-art technology armor. This doesn't boost her confidence, because the other four idiots said the same thing. But since he's a prince, maybe this time, he'll be able to pose a challenge for Leon. Before the battle begins, Leon asked the prince if he knew about Olivia, but he says he has only heard about her and they've not had much of a conversation. It just shows how much the storyline has changed because, in the game, the prince meets Olivia as soon as school starts. This just shows how much influence Marie has had in the plot. This time Leon decides to attack first but unlike the others, the prince's armor parries. Most likely because his armor was very well built. Leon continues to berate him both physically and verbally, even saying it's strange that the prince is willing to share the girl he loves with his friends but this does nothing to the prince. Leon also tells him that his love for Marie is all well and good but why is he ignoring Angelica's feelings because she also loves him, but then he says she's only interested in his crown. Leon warns him that if he continues to do that to Angelica, he could be stripped from his title, but the dumb prince goes off saying that he doesn't care and would rather die. This enraged Leon because, of course, it's only the privilege that can say such. Someone who had to struggle for everything he had just to survive and rise won't utter words like that. The prince here is full of contradictions. He says that Leon can just kill him knowing full well that he can't because he's as good as dead if he kills the crown prince. For someone saying he doesn't care about his status, he seemed to be enjoying the benefits. Despite saying all this and playing the role of the villain for the sake of the prince and the kingdom, this doesn't change the prince's mind. This whole ordeal made Angelica cry because she finally realized how stupid the prince is. I mean she finally realized that the prince is serious about his love for Marie. Olivia also tries to talk some sense into him but it's like you're talking to a brick wall. The prince's mind was made up and nothing was going to change this. Leon realizes this after figuring out the right way to win without killing the prince, showing that he has been trying his best to hold back. He decides to utterly defeat him, destroying every piece of his armor in one fell swoop. Angelica thanks him for his assistance with the battle, and heads off, while Olivia asked him why he was playing the role of the antagonist. Our Chad Leon, he's not the hero they want, but he's the hero they need. He also tells her that after everything he has done, he's sure he would be kicked out of the school. Angelica is shown trying to comfort the prince, but his mind is still as stubborn as ever, making her realize that he was dead serious about what he said in the battle. The conversation ends with them calling off the engagement. Just have to feel sad for the poor Angelica whose whole life was made to be the perfect wife for the prince only for him to change his mind so suddenly. Knowing full well about the dangers of going against the royal family, he decides to smooth things by meeting Angelica's dad and making a very generous donation to him while pleading for his life and family to be spared. He also made a couple of suggestions like dropping his knighthood and barony also. This was a bit confusing to them because, from their point of view, he had nothing to gain and everything to lose. So why go through all that trouble? But he blatantly lied out of his ass saying it was for the kingdom. This probably seemed very virtuous to Angelica's dad, because he accepts and tells him to take Angelica to the countryside, most likely due to the events surrounding her and the prince. While walking, he starts feeling sad about the school that he'll be leaving and started reminiscing. At the airship, Angelica is feeling sad about everything, not just about her but the fact that Leon was cut in the crossfire, and she didn't even properly thank him before going to meet the prince. But Olivia consoles her saying Leon knew exactly what he was doing and had planned for it to be like this so she shouldn't take full responsibility. Here we see people who are meant to be rivals or enemies in the original story, being close enough to console each other, thanks to Marie's interference. Luxian asked Leon why he doesn't go over there to console them but Leon says that words alone won't do it, so it's best to just leave them. He's just like me, running away from awkward situations. At home, his parents and maid were preparing for their arrival when the stepmother came in like the boss she is, slapped a few people, and bossed some more. She knew Leon was coming and was ready to berate him, but when Angelica, who is of a higher nobility status than her, walked in and told her the good thing Leon did for her, feeling awkward, she left. I have to say, this is the second time she's put in her place and I'm loving every moment of it. Leon takes the two of them sightseeing around his personal island which they called quote-unquote paradise, and then the hot spring scene, 
The famous trope in anime where all we get to see are clouds. Even if it could be seen, it would be edited out in the post. Both Angelica and Olivia seem to be getting along over the fact that they have a lot in common. And by a lot, I mean, neither of them is our Chad Leon's lovers. And they became close. A little sus if you ask me but I digress. Olivia suggests that they should call her Liv if they're okay with it. And Angelica says her friends and family call her Angie so if they want, they can call her that too. Angelica admits that she's still bitter about the whole situation with Marie and the prince and wants to have revenge. Leon says he can help her with revenge which concerned Olivia. But then Leon told her that the best revenge is for her to be happy and forget the prince. Any other revenge is a waste of energy. Our Chad has struck again, which makes Olivia happy. Very sus. So now, at first you might think that Marie won. But that's far from it since the dumb prince and his not-so-smart friends lost all their nobility and wealth. So she just has five broke guys. And they pat themselves on the back with cringe lines like don't worry, even if you can't come close to her, we'll take care of her for you. All of Marie's plans of rich life surrounded by rich pretty boys were destroyed. Someone seemingly important was at Leon's house to tell him about his fate. He says that Leon and his household won't bear any cross for the incident that happened with the prince, which Leon was happy about at first. But then the real shocking news was delivered. And congratulations, Lord Leon! Ah! Nobody said I would get a freaking promotion! Our main character is suffering from success and was given a royal title directly from the king and queen, which means he doesn't have to leave the school anymore. Luxion gives Leon a status update about Marie and the prince. Since they've lost their riches and titles, they are now earning money through dungeon clears and also training on the side to defeat Leon. Says they are all enjoying themselves, all except Marie. And now, Leon's true friends, Angie and Liv, who know his real personality and don't mind, drag him to have some fun. You might think that's the end right. Well, that's very wrong because this isn't even half of the series. 